Hey there, good morning. I wanted to welcome you to our online service here at Center Church. Before we kick off, I just had a few things I wanted to share with you. First thing is, we would love to connect with you. Our email address is connect at centerchurch.org. Shoot us a message there if you'd like to get plugged in. Secondly, do you have any questions about controversial issues, the Bible, theology, or church? If so, Pastor Godfrey has a ministry called Pastor Godfrey's Corner, where you can submit a question and then we'll get you an answer to it. Lastly, we would love for you to connect with us on social media. Our Instagram and our Facebook handles are where we're most active, and in the description below, the links will be posted. That being said, I hope you enjoy the rest of our service. Romans chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Today's message title is, God Redeems You. I'll be asking two questions for this message. First question is, what is the price of your redemption? And second question is, how does redemption in Christ make a difference in your life? Fear can hold you prisoner. Hope can set you free. Is a tagline of a 1994 American drama film, The Shawshank Redemption. The film tells the story of a man who is sentenced to life in prison for the murders he did not commit. The film shows two stories of redemption. First, the character Andy Dufresne, played by Tim Robbins, once confirmed his innocence through the confession of the murder by another prisoner, finds motivation for hope of freedom. Second, his friendship with another prisoner named Red, played by Morgan Freeman, tells a redemption story of a prisoner sentenced to life in prison. When Red was finally freed on a, par on a parole after serving 40 years, he could not adjust to life outside of prison like the previous parolee who hung himself. But his friendship with Andy saved him from hanging himself, and the two enjoyed reunion in freedom. The first four chapters of Romans can be described with one word, faith, and shows the life of the innocent man being sentenced to death and being raised up to life. Then the next four chapters of Romans can be described with one word, hope, and invite you to let go of fear and be set free by the hope in Christ. As we start Romans chapter 5, this is the good news I want to tell you today and the next few weeks as we look at chapters 6, 7, and 8. So let's ask the first question. What is the price of your redemption? The answer to this question is found in the conclusion Paul draws in verse 9 in chapter 5 of Romans. It says, Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood. This sentence tells us that the price of your redemption is nothing but the blood of Jesus. What is the significance of the blood? We read from Leviticus chapter 17. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it for you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement by the life. In verse 14 it says, For the life of every creature is its blood. Its blood is its life. Therefore I have said to the people of Israel, You shall not eat the blood of any creature, 
for the life of every creature is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. In the New Testament, the author of Hebrews explains redemption through the blood of Christ in Hebrews chapter 9. Quote, But when Christ appeared as a high priest of good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. These are verse 11, verses 11 and 12. In verse 14, this is what he says, How much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. According to Hebrews, the blood of Jesus is the price of your eternal redemption and the purification of your conscience now. So you can be alive in everything you do. What great news for all of us who struggle with guilty conscience, unspoken shame, and revolving stories that keep you from participating in the unfolding drama of salvation in Christ. Whether you're religious or not, you want to earn your redemption. People call you religious when you try to earn your worth through your efforts to be on the good side of your God. Everyone else is just trying to earn their worth through their efforts to make money, gain more experience, or create a new identity to feel like God themselves. The choice is between Believing that God is God or that you can be like God. The decision that Adam had to make is the decision that you are, make, you are making. Jesus believed that God is God and his faith in God raised him from the dead. Do you believe that God is God? Do you believe that this true God raised Jesus from the dead? In Romans chapter 5, we read four therefores. Verse 1, verse 9, verse 12, and verse 18. The first therefore in verse 1 is the conclusion of the first four chapters showing what God's righteousness looks like. Creation displays the glory of its creator, according to Romans chapter 1, verse 20. His invisible attributes weave through the fabric of the creation like a pattern on a quilt. From the smallest visible matter, such as quark, to the biggest visible stars in the universe, they all declare the glory of God. We have been justified by faith. Faith is seeing the spiritual reality of God as the true God. It is by faith and through faith you can acknowledge that God is God. God is just. God justifies those who do not deserve His mercy. How can a just God justify the ungodly? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the answer. It is the credited righteousness of Jesus in your account that God considers you righteous. The second therefore in verse 9 answers the question, what is the price of your redemption? 
The price of your redemption is the blood of Jesus. We move on to third therefore in verse 12. It reminds us of the bad news of what happened with the first Adam. Through one man, sin came into the world. Then death spread to all men because all sinned. There is no exception. Everyone is a prisoner of fear. People spend so much time and energy on the fear of losing control, comfort, and confidence. Life slips away as people fade in the background when you are in the prison of fear. The fourth, therefore, in verse 18 of Romans chapter 5 reminds us of the good news of what happened with Christ. Through one man, grace came into the world, and the free gift of life and the righteousness are offered to all men. We have the hope of the world in Christ, the hope of deliverance from fear of death and death itself. The hope of redemption in this broken society and your broken body changes your life from inside out and makes your life to count. Redemption is the restoration of God's reign in your life. Let me repeat. Redemption is the restoration of God's reign in your life. Jesus shed his blood on the cross to buy you back from the prison of fear and death. Jesus shared his life through humble obedience to the Father and service to people. Jesus came to show what the reign of God on earth looks like. Jesus came to share the joy and glory of obedience to his Father. Jesus showed what joy looks like in obeying the Father's commands. Colossians chapter 1 verse 19 and 20, it says, For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. The peace with God is having the right relationship with God. When you are right with God, your body and soul find beauty and glory. When you are right with God, you enjoy friendship and communion with other people. When you are right with God, you are in control of things. The peace with God is living a blessed life where all things are in harmony and working properly. The price of redemption Jesus paid with this blood reconciles all things to himself. All of creation and all of his creatures are reconciled. Jesus who calmed the waves and the winds in the sea of the, at the Sea of Galilee would not only calm but complete the work of recreation and restoration of all things. And that's the hope worth living for. And this is the hope you are offered to embrace and own in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's ask the second question. How does redemption in Christ make a difference in your life? We learn that redemption is the restoration of God's reign in your life. How does this happen in the context of everyday life? Being right is being reconciled. Being reconciled is being alive. 
In the movie The Shawshank Redemption, Andy Dufresne comes alive and seeks freedom from the prison. He no longer was dominated by fear of beatings and solitary confinement. What changed him was the story of the confession of the murders he was accused of by the real killer. It was the confirmation of his innocence. It is a feeling of being right. Andy knew he was right all along. He did not kill his wife and her lover. He was innocent. He found strategy and strength for the pursuit of freedom. You see, being made right with God gives you that motivation to live for freedom. Redemption in Christ makes the statement, we have peace with God, into a reality where you experience peace of mind and peace of heart in adverse situations both in the past and the present. Redemption in Christ makes the statement, we rejoice in hope, into an experience where you find joy and gladness in seeing and tasting the heaven bought and brought to you by Jesus' victory over sin, death, and Satan. Redemption in Christ makes the statement we rejoice in suffering into a strength that supports and sustains you through pandemic and other kinds of issues, failures, and setbacks in your life. Redemption in Christ makes the statement we are reconciled to God into a security and safety of being in a right relationship with God. You're not ashamed anymore because God is your loving Father who acknowledges and welcomes you as His own. You're not afraid anymore because God is your good Father who provides and protects as protects you as His own. Redemption in Christ makes the statement, we are saved by His life into an energy that makes you come alive to look forward to what is next, what God has in store for you. Your redemption in Christ empowers you to fight both errors of moral bankruptcy and moral hypocrisy. You are now free to fight for moral vulnerability and integrity. Jesus did not condemn nor condone an adulterous woman caught in the act. As you hear about and watch the moral hypocrisy of the elite or the powerful, make sure you're not going morally bankrupt. You no longer have to be defensive because there is no more condemnation and because in your place, Jesus stood condemned. We need to stop blaming or pointing fingers at other people or situations for why we're not happy or healthy. Jesus took the blame so you are delivered from spending your energy blaming others. Jesus was ridiculed so you're delivered from ridiculing or belittling others so you feel right or superior. In Jesus, we find healing. It is at the cross of Christ that you and I need to go, that we, we need to sit and we need to spend time, our energy, and repent and believe that Jesus died on the cross for you and for me and for others. You no longer have to hide or hold a fake self because there is no more shame and because Jesus scorned shame on the cross. 
You can be honest about your moral failures and stand forgiven by the blood of Jesus. And this is what moral vulnerability looks like. It is okay for you not to be all put together. It is okay for you not to be perfect because Jesus stood perfect both in his death and in his life and he is inviting you to participate in the life where you can grow in moral integrity one step at a time one obedience at a time. You can be humble about your moral successes and stand on the rock of Jesus whose righteousness secures and supports your right standing with God and with others. Therefore, there's no boasting in who we are and what we do. All the boasting is in Christ Jesus. You'll be less haughty in your accomplishments, accolades, and awards. And also you'll be less naughty in your vices, evil intentions, and selfish ambitions. You value relationships that are intentional about being vulnerable. You value responsibilities that would cultivate character and integrity. What does redemption in Christ look like in your daily life? It is a life of worship. You sing with the psalmist who says, O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. Psalm 130, verse 7. For this coming Friday, I have following questions for discussion prepared for you. Here's the first question. What are similarities and differences between Adam and Christ in Romans chapter 5, verse 12 through 21? Second discussion question. If sin is seeking your own sovereignty, what does righteousness look like? Romans chapter 5, verse 21. Question number three. How do you have peace of mind and heart in light of having peace with God? And here are the following uh, scripture verses that you can um, look up and cross-reference to answer this question. John chapter 14, verse 27. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. And Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the redemption that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a wonderful hope that we have in your Son. It is our prayer, O oh God, and as we behold, as we see and taste your goodness, your glory, and your beauty, and the declaration of the gospel that you are God, that you are just, that you justify the ungodly, may that faith connect us with our daily lives, our, our everyday life, that in the midst of brokenness in the midst of messy relationships in the midst of sickness failures setbacks frustrations and sometimes us not knowing what to do finances time everything out of control when we feel like what we see in the society in ourselves is nothing but chaos and void we pray, O oh Lord, as the Holy Spirit hovered over the void and the chaos at the creation, at the beginning of creation, Lord, I pray for the Holy Spirit. I ask, we invite the Holy Spirit to do the work of the regeneration of hearts for those who have not confessed that you are God and Jesus is the Lord and Savior. 
And for those of us who are asleep in the life, for those of us who need the revival and the renewal, we pray, O oh Lord, that the Holy Spirit will hover over our hearts. The Holy Spirit will soften our hearts, will help us to repent, change our mind about of our, our views of you, O oh God, and even ourselves, and that we will find our worth in the blood of Jesus and the life of Jesus. And thank you, O oh God. Thank you for the hope that heals, the hope in Christ that helps us in our present need. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you will help us to look to Christ for every help that we need, that Jesus, being our Lord and our Savior, will, will be not just a confession, but it will be a daily struggle and fight where we see ourselves growing in conformity with Christ Jesus in His likeness. And we pray that you do this for your glory and for the good of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. i
the blood